the last session of our express videos related to performance management F5 uh, will relate to performance measurement and control and mainly we'll discuss here financial non-financial indicators one the first category of non-financial indicator is the balance scorecard that addresses a number of parameters or perspectives in monitoring business performance that's the financial customer internal business process and learning and growth uh, perspective basically it addresses the four sides the four blocks uh, which the company must look at when they are when it is assessing the performance of the business usually we are only dealing with the financial ones the financial perspective and these are the usual financial indicators we are monitoring from customer perspective we should shall take into consideration but we shall set kpis on factors that will determine our success in front of the customers uh, internal business processes uh, that would include business processes that we must excel at, we must be good, good at. And learning and growth is just like innovation. Um, how we do teach or um, train our people to make sure that actually the internal business process and the customer's perspective can be sustained with the human capital that we have in the, within the company. Monitoring these four blocks will ensure that the company is um, looking at all the perspectives necessary to make sure uh, make sure that it will succeed in the future is these concepts the non-financial indicators are used alongside with the financial indicators financial indicators are usually very well common they are they are well known but companies that do tend to focus only on the financial perspective and miss out all the other ones are kind of um let's say focused on the short term and strategy strategically we might or we might we shall focus only also on the long term to make sure that the company will survive this Gerald and Moon's uh, approach is pretty similar it's just um, <clears throat> it, it let's say makes a difference between dimensions result standards and rewards dimensions are pretty similar to um, the um, balance scorecard what should we measure profit competitiveness on market quality of the products these two can be get together as the uh, cons customer focus resource utilization innovation and flexibility are pretty similar to the, pre pre the previous ones yeah internal business processes and learning and growth learning and growth can be associated to innovation while resource utilization and flexibility to um, internal business processes Right, and then we have to alert feature on the node also sets out how standards shall be set up. So these are, they must be achievable and fair. Employees must buy into these rules. So this is kind of the standard setting process, how they should be. And then rewards must be clear and must be controllable by the employees. So this is basically how we, if you want to go back to the previous session, how we set our standards. Yeah, we should set standards in these dimensions satisfying these rules and rewarding the employees that, set it, that reach those standards based on clarity, motivation and controllability. As we discussed, only um, factors that are controllable by the employees shall be taken into consideration when we are rewarding them. Yeah. As we said, service quality is an area that is difficult to assess in an objective man man manner, so we shall take into consideration um, different factors also. KPIs, key performance indicators, are the ones that are usually used to measure the above uh, in terms of balance scorecard and the standards. And it can be non-financial ones like turnaround time, as it's uh, example for here, here for you, or, I don't know, customer satisfaction service and so far and so on, number of teaching days, number of uh, training days provided to employees. These are all non-financial indicators. Another um, aspect if, of performance measurement and control is divisional performance and transfer pricing. Transfer price between divisions, divisions are operating segments of the company that have a different objective but they have a very well defined objective. Um, it can be market price, production cost as standard plus opportunity cost of the seller. So if he sends sells inside the division, he will have an opportunity cost because he cannot sell outside, he has a limited capacity. The same goes for actual production cost plus opportunity cost, production cost plus the markup. This is just like cost plus uh, pricing strategy or production cost using full absorption, taking also into consideration fixed costs. Yes, or best bargain, that's the negotiation between D 
the um, division set actually the best one if it if it can be done. Divisional objectives may not be aligned with one with the another with corporate objectives. So one division must might have the objective of uh, maximizing its selling capacity or production capacity. The other one might have the objective of maximizing its sales capacity. Now it depends how the, the, the relationship between the divisions are and what's the relationship with the corporate uh, objective also. And whether the uh, first or the second or both of the uh, divisions do have external market or they don't because that will influence the, their objectives also. Return on investment in this is a financial indicator that is used on divisional level. Earnings can be measured at this, at the divisional level using um, this indicator. This is very similar to return on capital employed that is used on the company level, just that we are using the profit attributable only to this uh, division that we are discussing about. For example, if a division head has an actual ROI of 20%, might not want to accept a project that offers him a 50% ROI if his bonus pay is based on ROI. Yes, because it means that if he has right now 20, he will accept the project that has a return on investment of 15. It will drive down his return on investment, depending on uh, what proportion this project will be in the total uh, capitals and profits of the division. But anyway, it will drive down. So he will not accept because his bonus is based on the 20%. If the company's target of return on investment is 12%, from the company's perspective, it would be an acceptable project because it's above the target, but from, from the division head's perspective, it might not be the case. So this is a situation where the uh, division's objectives are not aligned properly with the corporate objectives. Residual income is another um, financial indicator that's divide, residual income is equal to the uh, earnings before interest and tax of the division. Interesting tax are usually not controlled by the division itself, so we don't take that into consideration. Less a notional interest charge, that's the capital employed multiplied by the capital charge or cost of capital of the division. A positive result adds profit to the division's result beyond its incremental capital cost, and it should be accepted if the RI is positive. And then here we have a whole example on it. The division is generating a 12% ROI. Oh, sorry, is, is uh, generating a ROI of 12%, examining a new project with a capital investment of 4.5 million, cash flows are expected to be 1.5 and the cost of capital is 10%. After doing the computations, we'll see that both from ROI and RI perspectives, the project does not look favorable to the division because it is below its targets. Right? It's negative, generating negative residual income. So it will not accept even that the cost of capital is 10% from the second year actually it exceeds the um, uh, the residual, the return on investment percentage, and because of the fact that the net present value of the uh, of the project is higher than zero, it means that exceeds the cost of capital of 10% from the company's perspective, it would be acceptable. But from the division's perspective, it will not be acceptable. Only looking at this um, computations. So, as we said. Objectives must be aligned. This will be the focus on your, of your questions in the exam on this topic. In not-for-profits organizations and public sectors, uh, there are similar issues to the uh, profit-making companies and careful management of costs and objective, uh, let's say, reach of the objectives has to be fulfilled. Please also remember in these areas the three E's, that is economy, efficiency, and effectiveness acquiring resources at the lowest possible prices, that's economy, efficiency, using um, the, the resource in the most efficient way, so uh, getting the resources there at the given level of the uh, inputs, get the most out of them, the most outputs, or using as less inputs as we can for a given level of output, and effectiveness, just reaching the goals, organi organizational objectives, that's the three E's. Based on these, we can analyze the performance of not-for-profit organizations. And nevertheless, as um, a balance scorecard also gave us a hint, a company that is only focusing on their internal fact <coughs> factors will not be very, very uh, effective on the long term and efficient on the long term. They must also consider external uh, world and what's going on outside, what's the, what are the competitors doing, how is the market doing, how innovative shall be, how uh, we should train the people, how we should motivate our resources, and so far and so on. Only 
companies that will figure out how to motivate and actualize their true potential and people will be winners on the long term. Uh, this being said, this is the end of our express videos on ACC AF5 performance management. Good luck for you. To, good luck to you in, the, in your exams.